I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bummery here again with another Best Movie You Never Saw, and this week we're taking a look at Andrew Nichols' Gattaca, starring Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, Alan Arkin, and Jude Law with a beautiful score by Michael Nyman. Now, this one takes place in a near-future society where eugenics has become dominant. Society is divided into two cases, valid, meaning genetically engineered, and invalid, meaning natural conception. In this world, all high-paying jobs go to valids, while invalids are stuck with menial work. Into this world steps Vincent, played by Ethan Hawke, an invalid who dreams of joining the space program and hatches a scheme to pose as a valid with the help of a troubled, genetically engineered athlete, played by Jude Law. Gattaca came out in 1997 and was a fairly obscure movie. As Ethan Hawke himself put it, when it came out in 1997, the zeitgeist was not interested in that movie. But over 10, 15 years, it comes up all the time. People always want to talk to me about it. And indeed, Gattaca is what you would call a cult hit. Now, the late 90s was a very different era when it comes to studio filmmaking. Back then, there was just a lot less emphasis on tentpole blockbusters. While studios definitely had movies set up throughout the year that were expected to make the bottom line look good, singles and doubles were highly valued too. A movie didn't necessarily have to make $100 million. If a movie cost $30 million and made about $60 or $70 million, that was considered great, especially after home video and well, VHS and the early days of DVD and cable. So the studios were able to take risks with some pretty interesting material. Sure, a lot of these movies would tank, but the occasional breakthrough, such as The Matrix in 1999, would make the risk very worthwhile. Now this is how Gattaca got made. Coming from a first-time writer-director, Andrew Nichol, whose script for The Truman Show helped him break through just a few months earlier, and carrying a $36 million budget, which would be considered way too high now for the kind of movie it is, but was actually bargain basement for a studio in the 90s, Gattaca was a cerebral sci-fi neo-noir character study. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? It's likely that it would never have gotten made if it didn't have a hot cast which allowed it to get passed off as a quasi-youth market movie. And the reviews were mostly excellent, but the film just tanked the box office, coming in 5th place opening weekend, being beaten by I Know What You Did Last Summer and The Devil's Advocate in their second weekend, Kiss the Girls in its fourth, and most embarrassing of all, the notable Brad Pitt flop, Seven Years in Tibet, which was in its third weekend. I'm proud to be of service, Your Holiness. Ouch. People really did love it though, and one of the people that has been outspoken the most in his love for the movie is Ethan Hawke, who's reteamed with Andrew Nichol a bunch of times on movies like Lord of War, which is another fantastic film, and Good Kill. As Ethan Hawke himself put in an interview in Time Magazine, Gattaca is among the best films in the history of cinema. I firmly believe this. Andrew Nichol is so smart. This movie announced the rival of a really, really original mind. Now, I don't know if I'd say Gattaca is one of the best movies in the history of cinema, but it is a pretty damn good flick. I vividly remember the first time I saw Gattaca. Growing up, I rented virtually everything that came out on VHS on the weekends, and Gattaca was a movie I thought had a pretty cool trailer, even though it vanished from theaters so soon that I had no chance or real inclination to check it out. Now don't blame me folks, I was 15 and in high school, money was tight, I would go see action movies, but a cerebral drama like Gattaca was a bit of a hard sell. The movie had a really cool cover on VHS, and while I wasn't a huge Ethan Hawke fan at the time, which would eventually change. I figured I'd give it a shot. I was expecting kind of a futuristic thriller based on the trailers and posters, and I remember being pretty damn riveted by what turned out to be a character study, which in some ways plays out like a proto-Black Mirror, albeit one done on a massive studio scale. And in this case, I really miss the 90s. I miss those beautiful looking studio movies. Now Gattaca would be micro-budget. Now, Ethan Hawke's plight in this film is pretty easy for me to invest in as a kid. You see, at the time I was overweight, and I was pretty terrible in any physical activity. I had Coke bottle glasses the days before I got contact lenses, and my classmates in high school really hated me, and I struggled. That the Ethan Hawke's character was able to dismiss a lot of his issues as cosmetic and find a way around them profoundly affected me. Soon after watching it, I hassled my parents for contact lenses, dropped something like 30 pounds courtesy of hard work and a diet, and I've more or less kept the weight off to this day, give or take a couple pounds, but it's damn hard, and started making a real go of things despite what I perceived as my handicaps. Thus, it was something of a seminal film for me, a really inspiring film, but which definitely made it far from the dark thriller it was sold as. Thank God, because I have to say, Gattaca is a film that really means a lot to me. 
It really is one heck of a great movie, with Hawk's performance so good I'd say it's one of the finest of his career. He's ably supported by young Uma Thurman as his valid love interest, who despite an absolutely perfect exterior, hides her own handicap. We do have one thing in common, only I don't have 20 or 30 years left in mine. Mine is already 10,000 beats overdue. It's not possible while Jude Law all but steals the show in his first big American movie. He plays Jerome, a genetically perfect athlete who wound up paralyzed after a suicide attempt and is merely biding his time before finishing the job. The relationship between him and Vincent is just note perfect, with it starting off pretty coldly with even a degree of rivalry before setting into a profoundly warm friendship, with Jerome doing all he can to allow his newfound friend to achieve the excellence he himself strove for. Special attention should also be paid by the absolutely gorgeous score by Michael Nyman, which ranks among the best of the era. Now, the notion of eugenics itself is easy to scoff at as kind of a fascist Nazi idea. Gattaca, though, doesn't let you off the hook so easily. If you were a parent and you had the option of assuring that your unborn child was going to be born with every genetic advantage, it would be pretty tempting. Heck, if my parents had the options of making me a genetic superman before I was born, part of me would have wanted them to take it, although the flip side of the coin would have been that the person I am now would simply have not existed. Alas, that's the danger of eugenics, uniformity, and prejudice against anyone who goes against the grain. The world of Gattaca itself acknowledges how flawed the thinking behind eugenics is, with many cases presented in the film of genetic cocktails going awry, and at its best the valids are shown to be complacent and lacking in the passion that allows the best of humanity to succeed. Now, throughout the film we're reminded that genetically Vincent is disadvantaged compared to his younger valid brother, Anton, played by Lauren Dean. Yet he has passion and a streak of determination that his brother could never possibly understand. Is that the only way you can succeed is to see me fail? I'm telling you. Because... God, even you are going to tell me what I can and can't do now. And nowhere is this driven home more than the classic climate that pits them up against each other. I didn't save anything for the swim back. He memorably says, and Ethan Hawke himself said, it's one of my favorite lines. I love that, and when I was doing the film, it really felt very strongly that this is a film that will last. Ultimately, I think it was a really high budget art film. More and more, there's no place for that, and it's a travesty. I feel like we've lost room in the movie theater for a whole genre of pictures. They can't make it anymore. And sure enough, Gattaca is a film that would not get made at all. Luckily, you can see this one pretty easily. It's readily available on many streaming platforms including Amazon Prime, Crackle, and the new Canadian CTV app, although you're going to have to put up with ads. You can also buy it on iTunes or Blu-ray, and it's definitely worth a blind buy if you haven't seen it before. Gattaca is one of those movies that really barely made a dime at the box office, but everyone who's seen it absolutely loves it. The worth of a movie can never be judged by how much money it makes, and if this were ever true, Gattaca is the poster child for this type of movie. It's never been an exceptionally popular film, but it's a well-respected one and definitely ripe for discovery. Check it out. I wholeheartedly recommend it. For JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Bumbrey. Do you want to drown us both? You want to know how I did it? This is how I did it, Anton. I never saved anything for the swim back. <laughs>